Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first trading day for the Bitcoin ETF. The madness is about to unfold, gang. Yes, Bitcoin has now been open for business in terms of ETFs. So investors across the world are now going to start buying Bitcoin ETFs. But remember, buying the Bitcoin ETF doesn't give you direct holdings of Bitcoin. You, we got to understand that, okay? It's just buying a contract that is a representation of whoever it is you're buying it from. So with the successful conversion of Grayscale's trust has now gone into a spot Bitcoin ETF, if you do decide to pick up Grayscale, you're getting access to a physical company that holds physical Bitcoin, okay? Whereas other ETFs are all relying on the derivative value of Bitcoin. So if you buy a Bitcoin ETF from another provider, then if it's synthetic, which means they don't physically hold the Bitcoin themselves, then you're anticipating that the returns you get off the ETF will be based on Bitcoin going up and Bitcoin going down. Now, that is very important to understand, okay? Be mindful when you do decide to try and get involved in this Bitcoin ETF game that you're ideally looking for companies that hold Bitcoin themselves. Because right now, it's about buyers coming into these exchanges. These exchanges then go over to other brokers, intermediaries, and buy the Bitcoin, and you are left with the ETF contract. But guess what? Welcome to Wall Street, Flavor. Word on the street now with a surprise reading of, in of inflation going up. <sighs> What does it all mean? Hmm. Is Powell going to pop his head up and start talking again, saying maybe we're not going to increase, decrease the interest rates just yet? The robust labor market is causing a little bit of a problem. But we saw that last week with the non-farm payrolls. OK, now the Nasdaq and the S&P have been extended to the upside quite significantly. More than 35 percent value has been involved or put into the asset prices. What does that mean? The stock market's overvalued, man. Simple. That's it. In today's live stream, I'm going to break it all down for you. I'm going to look at Bitcoin. Mm, don't worry, I got, I got you with Bitcoin. I'm going to dive into a few altcoins. We're going to navigate the stock market. We're going to have a look at a few cryptocurrency-based stocks that are getting the hype behind all of this. Now, listen, there is going to be a little bit of a strategy I'm going to unveil to you when it comes to doing this. This would really be ideal for the guys in the United States because in the UK, given that the UK wants to be a crypto hub, I can't buy the fucking ETF. I can't. UK people are not allowed to purchase the ETF. There's nowhere for them to do it unless we start doing the inside job and do that good old V's of the P's of the N's and all of that. But you can't. You just literally can't, especially when you want to be buying these ETFs. It's full disclosure. Passports, they even want to know what your nan's diet is like when you want to open an account. So, yeah, that's the situation that we've got. And I'll be talking about that very, very shortly. And I'm going to be mentioning how you guys can potentially go and pick up the ETF as well. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get with the flavor. Mad love and respect for passing through to today's live Let's get with the madness, man. Here we go. So what have we got here? Oh, the S&P. Yes, this is what we're talking about. The good old, wow, 3.4% smashes the expectation of 3.2%. CPI month on month has actually gone up, but the core price index has stayed at 0.3%. Now, that's okay. So we've got a little bit of a mixed signal right now, because if the core price index itself actually increases, that means the cost of goods are going up. That can only give us the idea that inflation is going to continue higher, which only means what? Well, investors now are going to see the cost of doing business is still probably going to be remaining higher. Why? Because the Fed might actually turn around and say, we're not going to cut the interest rates just yet. Even though we're so close to our mandate target of 2% and the, and the Federal Reserve is going to do everything that it can in its power to make sure that we maintain unemployment and make sure that it stays really, really low. We are low, man. In the past 50 years, that bad boy hasn't been to these levels for a long time. Biden economics, happy days. 
But the problem is, is what are investors going to do? Which is why you've got a lot of heavyweights in the in Wall Street talking about, look, 2024 is going to be a smack across the face. So let's get with the understanding of this Bitcoin ETF. How is it going to serve us? What can we expect now that it's all live and good for trading? So there is not really any way that you can... I can't pull up any charts per se for the ETF in principle, but if we just go over to this right here, we can see as of late, we've got this, um, the actual ticker symbol for the Bitcoin ETF. Okay, so it comes in ARC B, which is ARC 21 shares Bitcoin ETF, Bitwise at BITB and Fidelity, eight more rows right here. And it's going to, here we go, the Investor's Business Daily. Well, yes, I agree. Okay, so these guys just give you a little bit of a breakdown. We've got ARC right here. If I just quickly click the chart, so they've updated it. Please tell me you've updated it. Oh, there we go. Awesome. All right. So pre-market 9 a.m. So this is what the chart is for the ETF itself. Let me just bring this up for you guys, because it's only going to make life easier for us if we actually look at it on this chart right here, because I'm trying to actively get into it. So type in ARC. There we are. So I'm guessing that is going to be there. Here we go. Innovation in and in, 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 No. Oh, it's part of it as such. Okay, then. So this is where the pricing of it is right now, which is the Arc Innovation ETF, but it's not the ETF quote. So they haven't actually uploaded it on their webs on, on Investors Business Daily. But the idea is that we've got this in principle. Let me just go back into it. <clears throat> this is where we are. It's it's the, the, the actual ticker itself. Let me go. We're up 25.25% across the board with all of the tickers, okay? So we're seeing activity coming into play with this ETF. Now, we've got this website on ARK itself is how to buy it, all right? So you can go through to here. You can buy through your brokerage availability, and it gives you a list of all the people that are offering this ETF. So some of you guys in the States will know this. Ch TradeStation, Chase, E-Trade, Fidelity First Trade, TD Ameritrade, SoFi, Wells, Webull, Vanguard. So this is where you're going to be able to pick up the Bitcoin ETF. Now, unfortunately, I can't do anything about that. UK undermines crypto hub vision as US approves Bitcoin spot ETF. I can't buy it anywhere. And that's that's pretty bad, which really, in essence, for me to get access to this, there's two ways I can do it. I can either go and trade Bitcoin's price or I can look to try and pick up Bitcoin ETF by some way, shape or form, which probably means that I need to do a tour of the United States. So I might as well arrange something like that and do the Traders Reality Tour. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen? Put a face to it all. We'll all meet up somewhere. And I mean, we could drink a bit of alcohol, but I'll probably get shit faced on a glass of wine. Not even wine, like just a shot glass. I mean, I can't drink beer. No chance. Not because of any religious aspects. I'm Greek, okay? You know, we all start off with a drink, but it just doesn't sit right for me. I get dizzy. I get, I want to sleep, and I'm going to be a bit of a killjoy. $5, I'm shit faced. Best night out for you, ladies and gentlemen. But the UK is not really allowing people to buy this. So it's really all about the US, which is good news when you think about it. Because if UK can't buy it and they are trying to be the crypto hub, well, it only leads to the next thing, to make it available, all right? Like, we've got the FCA, which is the Financial Conduct Authority. You guys have got the SEC. So if the FCA comes along and says, okay, then, well, let's see about this Bitcoin ETF. What are the precautions? Well, they've done it in the US. The cousins, the UK, are probably going to do it as well. But first off, it's not actually happening yet, which is a little bit of a sad story. OK, now <clears throat> we've got this story right here. This is, again, talking about the idea that UK, will they be able to benefit from it? And the article dives into it all on the grounds that because of the FTX scandal and all the other, the Lunar Terror crash and what have you, that's kind of put everybody's backup in cryptocurrency in the UK. So the UK is trying to protect everyone, but they're actually denying everyone the opportunity to exploit this. Now, quickly going over into price of Bitcoin. So we go over and have a look. You can see Bitcoin has actually made a nice little flavorsome move to the upside. And this is what you're going to get, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Now that this ETF is starting to roll out, all you need to do now is effectively go over to other ETFs that are currently trading right now. Okay. So here's a list of them all. You've got this Van Eck Bitcoin Strategy ETF. Now, 
You've got this right here. It's trading at $41 a share. We go to another one. We've got the FTBX, which is a Fidelity Advance. Oh, no, not that, that one. Sorry. BlackRock. No, not that one. Sorry. Here we are. Um, here we go. BTF right here. That's $14. Okay. Now, listen. What's going to happen now is everyone in crypto is probably going to be going mad for Bitcoin, going mad for Ethereum on the idea that the ETF is going to be picked up and everyone's going to get involved with it. Yes, that's going to be the case. But just be mindful, all right? It's going to slow down. 88% of investors are waiting to see how Bitcoin ETF behaves after the approval. So that's this is the window where we need to sit back and enjoy what's going to happen next with this ETF. Like this ETF, Valkyrie Bitcoin ETH, that came out December 2021, traded nicely for a little while and then rolls over. OK, and it kept rolling over until December 22 before the assumed bull run come into play. Bitcoin starts moving up. So does the ETF. OK, Logically, we anticipate the same thing to happen to Bitcoin, all right? Now, if I go over to something that's a little bit more recent <clears throat> and have a look at ETH, the actual, when they ProShares ETH strategy came into play, you can see this was in September, December, well, yeah, just before December 23, the actual ETF for Ethereum, that came into play, it pumped up and then it dropped down and then it's resumed this move to the upside. So now that the Bitcoin ETF has come into play, if the idea of you taking the anticipation or the excitement of this ETF in Bitcoin, and you think it's going to lead Bitcoin's price higher, but you don't want to get involved in Bitcoin's volatility, then going to existing ETFs that are already out there might be a safer option for you, okay? Now, I don't know if any of you already hold these ETFs, but granted that e this ETH strategy ETF has moved up, we're going to expect a little bit of a recovery going into next week because it hasn't stopped moving up. And that's all because of this ETF hype. All right. Now, <clears throat> something else that you might want to take into consideration before we get into Bitcoin price action, the stock market. All right. So crypto stocks themselves, how are they going to fare with it? Well, we look at this and we can see that most of crypto stocks are protected potentially getting ready to break out. And this is on the weekly time frame. Now, for the guys that are trading on stocks, looking at the day trading principle, just park that to the side for a minute. But when you're looking at stocks like Riot for a bigger picture, we've got a big cup with handle principle with the retrace, which is going to lead effectively to the continuation up. OK, just take this into consideration. If you don't want to trade Bitcoin because of the leverage and you're not comfortable with it, getting involved in picking up a few shares in crypto based company stocks might be a safer option for you, okay? Now, Riot, quite frankly, is a decent play. Why? Even though it's priced at $15, its average daily volume is huge. It's 29 million shares. That's really good, okay? Now, if you get an asset that's cost the same price as Riot, but the average daily volume is less than a million shares, be prepared for volatility, Look at how this chart behaves. It's, it's smooth. It moves nicely. It comes down. It consolidates. Nice play to the upside. Comes down. Bit of news announcements right there, of course, regarding cryptocurrency and the random tweets and what have you. So it's really important that you put that in your minds when you are getting involved in this ETF game. I personally, I if I was able to buy the Bitcoin ETF, I wouldn't buy the new Bitcoin ETF. Not just yet. I would invest in the existing Bitcoin ETFs because the people that are already invested in the existing ETF are either going to load up on that existing ETF or maybe take up some profits. What I'm saying is there's more stability in the new, in the old ones than there is in the new one. And now with Bitcoin, everybody all excited about the Bitcoin ETF. We need to understand that there will be a corrective move once the ETF settles down. So don't be the guy that's buying the ETF now with the potential of seeing your ETF come down in value. The price needs to stabilize. It needs to find its happy medium. And then we're going to start seeing the movement in it. Because if it's going to be an alternative investment to Bitcoin and give you the exposure of Bitcoin, but not have any access to holding Bitcoin, chow chow decentralization, all right? then give it a week or so. Let the news die down about the ETF before they then start talking about the next scandal. Because after this ETF, the only thing that's next is the halving. Okay? And we're going to be diving into that soon. Now, let's get into the charts, ladies and gentlemen. 
Here we go. So what have we got? Bitcoin on its way, taking a nice little flavorsome move to the upside. I closed off my Ethereum trade yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, at the high. It did move up a little bit more, but I managed to close off just shy of around, yeah, 0.51 ETH. Um, Two-day trade, happy days, and I'm happy with that. I wanted to trade the ETF, and we've seen the success of it. Happy days, okay? So that was a nice little flavorsome move by Ethereum, but Ethereum was making the move, but Bitcoin now will have its day, and it will start to make some flavor to the upside. So for my day holders, looking at Bitcoin on the daily time frame, there is your confirmed, in principle, your confirmation of the move to the upside, Okay. So this is where you're going to be saying to yourself, all right, I've got a bag. <laughs> yeah, man, I've got a bag of Bitcoin. I've been loading up. I've managed to take some, I've got some money in the chart right now. The ETF has been released. Now I'm just going to be waiting for people to get involved in it, okay? So there's going to be news events. There's going to be reports being given out by all these investment firms. They are then going to be offering them the opportunity to purchase this Bitcoin ETF. And if you buy this Bitcoin ETF now, you're going to get a discount on the fees of X, Y, and Z. So you're going to be seeing that. And if anyone is already invested in ETFs, you'll get those reports where they will say, we are now offering the ability to buy X, Y, and Z. Click here if you want to take advantage of that flavor. Okay. So that's what's going to happen in the coming weeks. But there are a lot of investors that are sat on the sidelines waiting to see what the impact will be. Now, the Bitcoin ETF will not have an impact on Bitcoin. Why? Because the ETF in principle is going to be based on how much Bitcoin is going to be purchased so that they can subsidize that into the ETF in principle. OK, that's what these authorized participants are all about, which you might be hearing the APs. Now, the APs like JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Fidelity, Bank of America and what have you, whoever it is. OK, if they want the access to this, they have to go to these intermediaries and those intermediaries will be buying the Bitcoin by the means of cash crates. And then it's then going to be converted into their ETF or the value of it will be represented in the ETF. Now, BlackRock is saying that they're keeping their fees at 0.2%, but with the prospect of increasing it once it gets to a billion, $5 billion market cap, and it's going to go to 0.3%. It's still cheaper than buying it from crypto.com, buying it from Binance, buying it from Bybit, okay? And that's what's going on right now. We're effectively in the fees game. This is where people are going to be like, okay, is it cheaper for me to buy it here? Or is it cheaper for me to buy it there? With, with, with regards to the ETF, there's way more regulation in place, okay? With cryptocurrency directly on Binance, these ETF companies, they can't pause on withdrawals. You know, you have every obligation to withdraw at any point you want, okay? Only the government's going to stop the markets if they demand that. They can, you know, shut up shop if there is a catastrophic event, but in cryptocurrency, you can get any exchange decentralized at that. And they can say, we're stopping withdrawals today. And you're there and going crazy. And you go over to Twitter and you're like, oh, my God, you know, Binance or Bybit, you know, stopping withdrawals and what have you. Mm, that's FUD. That's sus and all that madness. You won't be getting any of that in the ETF. OK. Now, looking at Bitcoin price itself, we can see clear as day that Bitcoin seems to be finding a bit of a resistance at the 48. All right. Let's just put this into perspective for a second. You've just had an ETF. That means more capital effectively is coming into cryptocurrency. Now, if I'm a market maker, do I just want to send the price higher? No, 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 no. Not just yet. My goal is to pick up as much of it as possible within this range. Now, from a technical analysis point of view, you look at it and think, yeah, man, Bitcoin up. Okay, this is the daily time frame. But let's just go into the actual bids and the offers. What's going on? Well, just now we've had this order of 2.2 million at 47.2. That's not what I'm interested in. Going up, we've got 3.7. Not interested in that. Going up here, we've got a cluster of liquidity. There's one order. Well, just, just below. Where is it? There you go. 48,000. We've got 18 million contracts or tradable value. Okay at order amount, 18 million at 48,000. As we go up even further, we're starting to see a little bit more weight in these contracts. 13.4 million at 48,626. We go up a little bit more. We've got 10 million. Go up again. Anything above 10 million, keep on going. 10 million there at 49,300. 
Keep on going. There's a little bit of a gap. No one's interested. And then we've got at the good old Daddy D right there, 49,900 just before the good old 50K. Okay. So what we're looking at right now is at 50,000, 50 million contracts are going to be transacted or to the 50 million to the value being transacted at the 50K zone. So if I'm working on the principle of the bid and the ask and looking at the way market maker behaves, one would be of the impression that Bitcoin is preparing for a move to the upside. The US in the next five minutes will get access to this ETF, okay? They too will get access to what's going on with the employment data and what have you. So let me just go into that and refresh that. There you go. Unemployment claims coming in lower. That is nuts. Okay. Going over and look at, at things elsewhere. We've got the euro. Oh, euro. Not nice. It's taken a bit of a stab to the downside. So we're going to see how it's all going to work out later on today. Going into Ethereum. It's going up. Coming into that. So that's going to be very interesting to see how it behaves. BNB. Where are you? Come on, BNB. Currently sticking in line with our little play that we want. We want to see BNB go all the way up towards 37.8. Yeah, so 378. That's what I'm looking for with BNB right now. But I just need to go over and have a look at where we are in terms of the liquidity with Bitcoin. So here's the book map, ladies and gentlemen. Now, two minutes time. Bitcoin is trading away from its VWAP. And look at this. Look at this commitment. Mad commitment. So limit sales are being triggered right now. We've got commitment coming in, which is in line with what we've just done regarding the bid and the ask. Now, look, all of this here. Logic says that we expect Bitcoin to sweep this liquidity and look at how it's changing colors. The, if it's more orange, dark, red, that means there's big liquidity coming in on the offer side to sell. Okay. So on the back of that, we're going to start seeing vector candles coming into play to start lifting prices up. Now, if you're going to trade momentum, then you're going to want to take advantage of that flavor. What would you need to be seeing happening? So go back into Bitcoin. Over there. Here we are. Go to the five minute time frame. And what do we have? This is what people did not anticipate with the ETF. They didn't expect Bitcoin to move like this. But this is what we wanted. Why? Because slow trend is the true. Yeah. Yeah. The tr slow trend is the true trend, right? W formation, rise up, retrace, rise up, sweep, rise up. It's going to be a nice, slow climb. As we approach key areas like 48s, 50s, 49s, 60s, that's where you're going to see the push of the candlesticks, okay? So look what happened here. You've got the green vector candle at the midpoint of 47,500, it forces price higher, okay? They can't clear above the 48 just yet, but we're looking for a green vector candle to break 48,000. And that's going to get the party started, which will be in the next, where are we at? Yeah, in the next three minutes, the market, well, there we go, the market will be opening. But they too are going to see this reaction across the board. But the problem that we've got is Tesla has gapped down, down to 231. Go to NVIDIA all-time highs near enough. This bad boy has gapped up. So we're going to see a close of that gap. Okay, so just look, this is exhaustive. It's $543 a share. It just keeps on making all-time highs. Okay. Going into Microsoft, they too are gapping up. You can see price right here. It's just getting a little bit crazy right now. Going into Meta, that is gapped up as well. So this is all on the back of the inflation data coming in and the unemployment market showing strength. But it also means that we're probably going to see the Fed come and change its policy a little bit and maybe hold interest rates even longer without cutting them so soon, okay? So this is what we've got to take into consideration, guys. Now, back into BTC, we're starting to see the movement back up. I need to have a look at where we are in terms of other data itself. Let's have a look at what's going on in crypto, in tw crypto Twitter. So looking at these altcoins over here, we have got Zcash is doing pretty well. We've had Swap, Rec, and Hexro. Coming into play, it looks like most of the altcoins are going to be delivering the flavor today, guys. Um, come on, let me see where we are with this. Okay, here we go. So XTZ, FXS, BCH, XRP starting to pick up steam as well. Looking at the contract sizes over here, we've got a lot of selling coming into play, but spots been picked up on Bitcoin. And that's the thing, um, they're going to be picking up a lot of Bitcoin for this ETF. So we should start to see a lot of spot volume coming into play. 
Now, looking at the liquidity on the liquidations, we've got to be very careful because we do have this area right here at 48,250, which then marries up with the logic of what's going on with the book map. Look at this. See that big order right there? So the limit sales are being triggered right now. They want to they want to sell. So we're looking for Bitcoin to sweep 48. Here we go. We're going to get it. Market's going to be opening in a second. So let's get into it. Here we go. We want a green vector candle breaking the 48 zone. That's what we're looking for. And with the potential of Bitcoin continuing higher, but I need the conviction of the green vector. Every time a green vector candle comes into play at a significant point, that's going to make life easier for me to assume that the trend's going to continue. Why? Because a sweep up, retrace lower, hold at the green vector, continuation to the upside. Look at how they do it here. So you see the sequence, you've got push one, two, and then it continues up from that point. Another push is at the lowest part of the range going in back into the previous vector candles. Look left from last night's live stream where I gave you the exercise for the new guys to look left and marry up the vector candles as you see time price coming into play. Violet vector candle, Bitcoin comes back into it, moves up comes back down, red vector candle, leaves you the clue as to where they're likely to end up later. Price manipulates, stopping volume candle, we spoke about it last night, sweep the liquidity, reversal back up, and then we've got the move higher, green vector candle, price retraces into it. Now we're waiting for the continuation back up on the idea that the offers are gonna get triggered and start selling. We wanna see the selling at the top side. If they're offering out, it means that buyers are coming in and buying from them. OK, because they are doing what they're selling. OK, so just take that into consideration, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to see that activity happening very shortly. Where we at? We go 20 seconds into it all, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just check in with you all on the live stream where we at. Good afternoon, guys. What is good? Has anyone put any nice comments? Um, what else we got here? Anything candle, God candle inbound. OK. Pump and dump incoming. It's not dumping. You should have gotten earlier. It just went green on the one hour. NASDAQ's getting ready to make a move. S&P, new session. Here we go. The ETF is now available for the guys in the States. Give us the green vector, Mr. Bitcoin. Are you going to come in with that activity? Where's the book map itself? Here we go. They're triggering that. Those liquidations, those, those areas right there are starting to show interest. Here we go. We want to see a green vector. Volume needs to start picking up and pump a big count, a big push of delta to mark price up. There's someone selling at that point. If we have a look, you can see minus 38% on the sell side. That's good news to suggest prices are going up. So we've got to be very careful with this. <clears throat> ETC, yeah, the, what the ETF is undervalued. Yeah, of course it's undervalued because we don't know exactly where we are with the, ET, with the ETF. We do not know where we are just yet. You've got to give it at least a week. Give it a week, ladies and gentlemen. You'll know exactly where you are with the ETF. Here we go. Look at that. It's just come back down again. Treachery of Mr. Market Maker is going to keep on doing this all day, every day. Let me just pull this up. Have we got it up? No, we don't. Don't worry about it. We'll talk about that another time. Okay, then. So I just want to monitor this, how Bitcoin is going to behave. Let me zoom in on this and put this into perspective on orders. What I like to do with the book map is I like to zoom in and get a good little feel for how the bid and the offer are coming in on the book map, okay? So this might look a bit crazy for anyone, but what you're looking for is for every time price comes down, you wanna see how well the bids agree and step in and become aggressive to lift up the ask, okay? Now you see they've gone down, up, down, up, down. We've got this, look, this sequence right now, the offer is coming in, the bids are being hit. And they could bring Bitcoin down towards the VWAP, which is not too far away, if I'm frank with you all. Let me just have a look at where the VWAP is. There you go. So the VWAP is down at 47. I just had it. Where is it? 47.3, is it? I just had Oh, it's inside of the price. Okay, yeah. So where is my VWAP? I just saw it. Oh, there we go. This is where the VWAP is at 46.8, Okay. Whilst it's going down, limit sales are going to get triggered up here to be placed because they're going to want to sell into that later on, okay? So naturally, as Bitcoin's price comes down, we're getting ready to look. Look, vector candle recovery, we expect this. And we want to see Bitcoin try and climb back up because they seem to be rejecting this 48, which could be a market maker trap to get traders to step in and load up on the shorts. Let's go and have a look at this. Hold on a second. Let me just have a look and see where we are in terms of that. Whilst that's loading up there, here we go. How many shorts have we got inside of that range? 
All right, so at 48,250, we got 3.2 million billion dollars worth of short liquidations at that point. Going into that, we're pulling back. Let me just zoom in and have a look at what is being transacted right now as close as I physically can just to see where this commitment is coming in. So look, you've got a limit. You've got a sell candle here, 5.3 million, which is only transacted 34% of it. So we, this is where we expect the wick to get recovered, Bitcoin to try and come back up. At the start of a new hour candle, we expect it to try and come back up and fill this and finalize this order. Here we go. So we're going back into it now. So hopefully they can fill the sell offers at this point of 47,750. And that means if they're done with the business here, then we're going to try and see it work. The next bigger point, which is at 4.82, going into that area up here with the 18 million at 40. So logic says that we're expecting 48K to come into fruition today, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Be mindful of the stock market as well. Ooh. So last night's live stream, what we were talking about, the violet vector candle peering at the highest point, which is consistent with them selling a volume above 150% or more of the last 10 candles. But when it's a violet vector candle at the highest point, it also means that they could be slowing down on the selling. What we don't want to see is we don't want to see that turning into a red vector candle. If this can stay a violet vector candle, the next candle in principle will be the reason that Bitcoin climbs back up. Every vector candle you see Bitcoin printing inside of this range right here. So any vector candles that appear inside of this zone, we are coming back into them later. All right. Because look, look where we are. We're in essence in that price discovery. Not necessarily all-time high price discovery, but I'm, what I'm saying is there's nothing else for us to do but look towards the next areas of value which sit at 48K. That's the next logical thing. Now, the idea is that once 48 comes into play, everyone gets excited and like, yo, Bitcoin's 48K. And that's where it triggers the interest of retail to step in. And that's where we're going to see people buying at that point. Logic says we expect to retrace back in. That is very strong. That is very strong. Oh, closed off as a stopping volume. This is where it makes a move. Come on. Make the move, BTC. Make the move. Come on. Don't give me that BS. Do make sure you take 48 on a vector. Come on. This is the five minute time frame. Here she goes. Oh, gap down a little bit. So they're filling the orders right now. So that, that bid order has been taken. Let's quickly go into quickly go into this. The book map. There you go. They've pulled the orders. They've pulled the orders. That's not good. I need to see that get really concentrated. Limit sales to be triggered. Limit buyers now plus 30%, minus 21. It's, it's trying to find its feet right now. Okay, it's trying to find its feet. This is what you're going to get. People are rushing in buying. Look, it's moving fast. It's moving fast. That's a good sign. When they move fast, bids come in, lift it straight back up. That's, that's consistent with support. Okay, keep an eye out on Bitcoin right now. I'm looking for that vector. Come on. Give me that break of the 48, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if it can do it. B, do you think it could do it? Could do it on the vector candle on the smaller time frames. Let's have a look. Any green vectors on the one minute time frame? Um, one, two, three pushes up. That could be a continuation up again. Let's see. We get any vectors? I think we have one down here. Is it? Give me the green vector. Come on. Where are you? Oh man, please don't do this to me. Two minute time frame. At least, at least, I'm running so many things right now. Come on, Bitcoin. 48's been taken, but no vector just yet. I really need to see that. Why are you slowing down? What's going on? Here we go. 48's been taken. All right. Now we need to see the proof of this move to the upside. Come on. Here we go. No vector on the five minute. Fine. See, it's tapping the 48, coming back down a little bit, turning to a vector candle, and I can go about my day. No worries, my friend. Thank you for that. And if you are new to the channel, make sure you like the stream, man. Inflation is up. ETF is available. S&P and NASDAQ trading at the highs. You know, everything's a shitstorm, but it's all good. Vector, thank you. There we go. There's your vector candle. That leads then the flush of liquidity to the upside. It's what we've been waiting for. There's the vector candle. Thank fuck for that. Now, what happens is when you... <laughs> Look at that. This is what I mean with Bitcoin. The idea is now that you've got a lot of people transacting and hitting the offers. OK, so they're lifting price, lifting price, lifting price. So the idea now is on this liquidity here, they've tapped it and they're going to take that liquidity. Did they take that 18? Here we go. 18, 19 million hasn't been transacted just yet. They nearly did it, but they didn't full. They didn't go through with it. Here we go. It's not updating just yet. So I've got to give it a little bit of time. Give it a little bit of time to update, but it will update. So I want to know how much of it is actually been taken. All right. So Bitcoin's going up. Ethereum, where you at? 
Ooh, trading at the lows. That's okay. I can deal with that. I'll go to Solanage. Where's Solanage? Solanage is holding out right now. It looks like it's going to be Bitcoin's day. Looks like it's Bitcoin's day, break of the 48. Remember, there will be profit taking, ladies and gentlemen, and behind every green vector candle that moves to the upside, a little bit of a retrace continuation. If you're going to trade this sort of logic, you have to stick to a very tight stop because you're going to get bullied, okay? Listen, the ideal is that if you use the 5 and 13 EMA on the five-minute time frame, you're probably going to get shaken out. You need to use the 50 EMA on the five-minute time frame as a place where you would have an interest to place a stop. OK, now there's two ways you can look at it. You can either open a trade and say you've got a thousand dollars. All right. Hypothetically, split it into 25s. All right. Imagine you take along at this point at 25 percent of the of the of the balance. OK, so you've gone in at 25 percent. You can absorb it to go all the way back down to test the 50 EMA. Now, if the support comes in at the 50 EMA on the idea that they're loading up more longs, then you logically would need to take a, another position here, which would give you another 25% exposure of the $1,000. That means if it then bounces from this point and moves all the way back up, you're making money on that 25%, and you're effectively coming back in towards break even with that one on the hope that it actually continues to break out from that zone after they've come down, found support from the vector candle range to continue higher. That's the logic we have. As price continues to climb up, for every range they move up towards and they come back down, the idea is that you're loading up inside of the retrace. But don't think it's just going to continue to keep moving up. We have to look at where we are in terms of structure in the market. OK, so that's where higher time frames do actually serve a purpose. OK, going into the four hour time frame, we can see Bitcoin nearly taking that zone. It needs to clear this range. And then when we look left, going into even higher time frames, go to the 15 hour time frame just to make life a little bit easier for ourselves. We look left, we can see that Bitcoin is trying and it must break above 48,197 for us to realize a recovery up, which will take us to the next point of interest, which is this vector candle zone right here. 50,740. And then, of course, the actual $50,000 mark, which is actually around a 49,000 zone right there. So this logically from now going into maybe later on today, going into tonight, this could be the price point that Bitcoin finalizes, which effectively would be the hype behind the ETF. That is my opinion, ladies and gentlemen. Once Bitcoin gets into that, then we'll anticipate a little bit of a recovery. Because remember, there are a lot of people waiting on the sidelines working out whether they should get involved in this ETF or not. So just please take that into consideration, ladies and gentlemen, where are we at with time. OK, then I am short for time, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, I'm keeping it short and sweet today, guys. Listen, mad love and respect. And if you are new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. Tune in tonight. So we're going to dive into some altcoins. Going to do another deep breakdown on the altcoins for you. Uh, we didn't really do too much of it last night because it was all Bitcoin with regards to the ETF. But just remember, keep your position size and your exposure low and make sure you enjoy the game and do not give a discount to Mr. Market Maker. Have yourselves a wonderful day, guys. Mad love and respect. And we'll check in with you later. Peace.